These are the faces of men whose lives changed on a battle-scarred hilltop deep in the Indian jungle. The men who can still tell the story of their struggle to defend a tiny settlement called Kohima. The only troops in Kohima were a battalion of the Royal West Kents and a battalion of the Assam Regiment, about 1,500 men, and the Japanese were about 15,000. There was one soldier when his major came into his trench. They'd been fighting for 10 days and nights. He said, sir, when we die, will it be over? Or will we still have to go on? Until recently, local insurgency had prevented a royal visitor traveling the dusty roads to Kohima, a community which once lay in the path of the Japanese advance into India. But this year, the Duke of York was able to lay a wreath on behalf of the Queen in honor of those who blocked the invasion route and paid a terrible price. It was a, a very individual kind of war. It was a primitive war. You met the Japanese uh, one at a time, as it were, <laughs> and um, it was either them or you. The British and Indian forces were surrounded. Savage, close-quarter fighting took place around a commissioner's bungalow and a tennis court high on the ridge, where the landscape was torn by shelling and littered with those who couldn't be buried. It was exactly the same as the First World War trench warfare. It's as bad as that. You have seen the battle. This will help measure the result. The battle for Kohima claimed more than 10,000 lives and left survivors traumatized. One of my troops got um, a burst of machine gun fire and I tried to get him out and was holding his hand and looking into his eyes. I could feel the bullets hitting him. And he looked me in the face and said, it's no use, sir, I'm finished. And so I left him. That must have been tough. Yes, yes, it's been on my conscience ever since. And yet, at a time of remembrance, the veterans have thoughts not for themselves, but for the Naga people who lost lives and livelihoods in a conflict that was not of their making. The Duke has backed efforts to help the young of Nagaland, and his visit has strengthened those links. The survivors of what was once called the Forgotten Army grow fewer, but they are still repaying a debt of honour. Robert Hall, BBC News, Buckingham Palace.